Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about how you can connect to a remote computer. This could be over the internet, this could be on your local network. And uh, we're going to use GNOME boxes, which we have talked about in the past briefly. Um, and uh, we did before just how to do a virtual machine, but today I wanted to have a look at how you can actually connect to a remote computer. Now there's going to be a few extra steps here if you're going to be accessing something over the internet because you need to make sure that you have your uh, port pass-throughs turned on. We're not going to show that part here, um, but what we are going to show here is the basics for connecting to another X server based computer. In other words, a computer that has a desktop environment. We're going to be using GNOME boxes on our host, and what I'm using as my guest PC here is going to be my Raspberry Pi running um, uh, Manjaro. And so we're going to walk through these steps here. Now, some of these are going to be a little bit different for you depending on your individual setup or whatnot, but the basic premises are going to all be intact. So here's your simple steps. Number one, you need to have a VNC server enabled on the guest. So this is the Raspberry Pi, which we are connecting to remotely, needs to have a VNC server enabled. Second, you need to make sure that your firewall is going to allow your connections. So we're going to talk about the firewall on Manjaro here. And uh, depending on what firewall system you're using on your computer, you're going to need to tweak this if the firewall is enabled. On Manjaro, it is enabled by default, but they make it very easy to manage in Plasma. So this is also going to change a little bit. We need to make sure that uh, our server is set to accept connections. That's going to be important. And then we need to track down what the IP address is for the, uh, for the box that we are connecting to. Now, the extra step you're going to have to add if you're connecting to one over the internet, this is a good thing if you need to manage a family member's computer over the internet, you need to make sure that, that their, uh, their router has a port pass-through for whatever port we're using which on VNC server default is 5900 to 5903. So any of those, if you simply select uh, allow VNC server is going to be included in those ports. You need to make sure that you're doing a port pass through on those. That has to be set up on the router that is connecting the guest machine to the internet. Today, since we are doing everything on a local network, we only have to worry about one router and I only had to get in there to make sure I had the IP address for the machine that I'm using on the local network. So we're going to go ahead and get started here and the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to log into our uh, guest machine and we're going to go ahead and make sure that uh, the VNC server is enabled uh, or is installed first. So since this is Manjaro I'm just going to do a search for Pomac and we can install this directly with the GUI on Pomac when we go up there and do the search for VNC. And so with this, there are a number of different VNC clients that are out there. And the one I'm using is the X11 VNC server, which is available in the Arch community repositories. So it should be good and safe. There are other VNC servers out there. You're going to need to check your documentation on those. Now, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and deal with the firewall because you don't want to get all excited with the VNC server set up and then, ah, uh, why is it not working? We forgot to configure a firewall. So I'm going to pull up my firewall and I need to enter my administrator of credentials here and then notice what zone we are in. So it is telling us that our zone is home. So I need to select home and the firewall configuration. And then you can see there's a couple of other things that are set up. And what I need to do is go down and make sure that VNC dash server is enabled. Now, depending on your firewall, you might have the ability to select the services or you're just going to be able to have to select the port 5900 to 5903 to be open. So now we're going to open up the, uh, the protocol, select our port, it defaults to 5900. You can choose any port in there in reality, but for the simplicity here, we'll just go ahead and use that. Now this is going to start up the server and we get some extra connections. Make sure you enable any options for 
accept connections and for a little bit of extra security I'm gonna go ahead and enter a password here in reality you don't have to um, but that's just going to be a good practice I'm just gonna use my super secret password that's definitely not one two three for this so now that we have our uh, our, v, uh, our VNC server enabled, the next thing we need to do is jump on over to the host computer. So here on the host computer, the first thing we need is the IP address. In case it wasn't too obvious or you didn't have a way to, to grab it, one of the best ways is we're just going to go ahead and log into our router. This is going to be different depending on whatever you are, um, you are using. So in my case, I'm using PFSense. So on my PFSense dashboard here, when I just log in, go down to status and DHCP um, addresses, uh, reservations here, then everything, pretty much every other computer I have on the network, I've given it a static IP. This one, I don't really have a huge need to do that. But I find it in the list, and you probably won't have as many devices as I have. It'll be easier to find. In this case, you can see it's 192.168.558. So now we're going into our GNOME boxes here. We're gonna add, and instead of creating a new virtual machine like we did last time, now we're going to connect to a remote server. Now here I can do SPICE, RDP, SSH, VNC. VNC is going to be what we need for accessing the X server here. So we're gonna enter the IP address 192.168.5.58, and then we're gonna use a colon, which signifies the port we're using. If you remember, the default port was 5900. Now this is gonna ask us for a password. Hit the password, and now we are logged into the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this here so you can kind of see what's going on. You can see it even captures the mouse it's a little bit slower. It's not like logging into your main desktop. So even though the Raspberry Pi is not the fastest computer, I can still actually come in here and do all the different things I need. I could pull this up if I wanted to check email and I could use the browser over here as well. It might be a little bit slower, but let's just go ahead and pull up and see what happens. So let's just search for something. See how that works and you can see that we're getting internet access quite nicely we can pull in here we can do all the different things that we would like to do we could even kill the VNC server which would immediately lock us out but we don't want to do anything like that but anyway um, one thing I might be able to want to do is just shut the whole system down because well I'm done with this computer for the time being go ahead and shut that guy down and once that shuts down, GNOME boxes should end, uh, but we can also just go ahead and uh, uh, scale it back down and just close it. So you can see now it says the connection failed. That's because the connection is no longer there. So hopefully this is a good beneficial tool for you if you need to manage any of your other devices. Of course, you can configure your devices to enable the VNC server uh, on boot up and things like that. These are all different options that you have to choose from, but this is just a basic overview to get you familiar with the simple tasks of getting connected to a remote desktop on Linux on another computer inside your network. So let me know if you're interested in other videos like this in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.